We meet a successful businesswoman whose life started very differently in the Philippines. And there's another selection. Get in contact with. Now, our next item has all the ingredients of a good story adventure, romance, and success. Maria Jordan, or Paz as she likes to be called, is not only profoundly deaf, but also came to England from a native Philippines with no knowledge of BSL. Now, she's a successful businesswoman at leading global investment bank Lehman Brothers. I was born in Manila. I lived there for the first 27 years of my life. I've got a deaf sister, two brothers, and there are six girls all together. I was born hearing, and when I was four I had an accident. This caused my hearing problem. And it was from my sister that I learned to sign. I don't use my voice. We had a poor life. Growing up we weren't rich. We had a hard life. We went to work. There were eight of us all together. That's why my father tried to encourage us to get a good education as we were growing up. I went to a college called St. Benald and I learned accounting. I chose accounting because I thought it had good future prospects and I thought I'd be able to get a decent job. After I graduated, I had a lot of people asking me if I wouldn't mind getting involved in helping other people who had problems. So I went along to a Catholic church for deaf people and I passed the requirements. I was a personal safety teacher, a teacher who went out to schools and worked with children who had gone through sexual abuse or sexual bullying. I met Paz in the Philippines in 2003. I was working there for a year with VSO, Voluntary Service Overseas. I'd been there for about five months and I met Paz when I was out on a day trip with some friends. When I first met Andrew, we didn't really get to know each other straight away. I knew he was a volunteer with VSO and he worked with young people, but we worked separately. He focused on the college students and I worked with the children at school. Our relationship developed in the Philippines and we used their language. When we're here at home, it's automatic for us to use that language. Every time we try to use BSL, it just naturally reverts back to FSL. It's just natural. When we first met, Andrew asked if we could meet up again. I thought that was fine, that's normal. We're both professional people and it was easy to communicate because of the language we used. He had a real respect for the Philippines and he'd learned the language, not just British Sign Language. We were with each other for a year, and it just felt natural. We didn't fall in love straight away. It was a gradual thing. It felt very natural and smooth. I proposed to Paz when I had one month left in the Philippines. And it was up to her to decide if she wanted to follow me back to the UK. So we discussed it, and it was her decision. I proposed to her as a sign that I would love and respect her and that I'd never leave her. I talked it through with Andrew and we decided to move to the UK. First I had to let my parents know and my family. I told them I'd be moving to the UK and they were really surprised. They knew that I could do it, that I'm confident and I'd travelled before in the past. 
that they asked me to remember them, which I said of course I would, and that I would return. So when I flew out, I did feel sad that I was leaving my family, and I didn't know when I'd see them again. When I arrived, it was a mixture of feelings. It was really exciting, but I was also a little unsure. I felt a little torn between the UK and the Philippines when I first arrived. BSL was difficult to learn to begin with. I asked Andrew, my husband, if I could go and do volunteer work at RAD, and he said it was possible. So I found some volunteer work. RAD have a, a lunch club and I knew that they needed volunteers so I thought it might be useful for Paz to do volunteer work and then she could learn BSL. She'd learn BSL from the other people there. I was mixing in the deaf community, in pubs and deaf clubs, all the time, just trying to pick up the language. I improved really fast. In about a month I picked up a lot of the basics. I'd been thinking about getting a job, so I went through the Scope website. I had to apply first for a scheme, and about 200 other people applied. I was successful and got into the second round of interviews. We had to be assessed and give a presentation. I passed that and had to do another interview. After that, they gave me a choice of companies I could work for, and they offered me Lehman Brothers. Good morning. They trained me first on the processes and the information systems using the computer ITS system. I would have to check whether the written reports correlated with the information on the computers. My supervisors followed my progress and after a while they asked if I was confident enough to go on to the next stage which was closed claims, which I felt ready to do. I work as a senior analyst with a focus on America and the payment of dividends from US companies to shareholders. I use two computer screens and have to check the information correlates on both systems. And if there's anything incorrect on the tax, I pass it over to the tax department. Pez has been with us for 12 months now, and with the help of the interpreters, we've managed to train her on some of the functions within the group. And over time, she's now able to perform these functions to the abilities of our hearing staff. The staff here have developed their signing. Before, they didn't sign at all, but they went for signing classes in SSE. So when I came, their signing improved dramatically. When there's no interpreter about, we either communicate using pen and paper or simple sign language. In 2006, we received a special award uh, for disability excellence um, from the Best Workplaces um, UK um, Forum. Um, we were the first um, investment bank to achieve this honour um, and it was uh, published in the Financial Times. Do you think that you're treated as an equal to hearing people or is there still an inequality? Here or in the Philippines? Both. In the Philippines, it's very unequal. People think you're stupid, that you can't communicate, you can't work. You're treated as inferior. But in England, it feels equal. In Britain, it's far better. Don't you yeah, think? Yeah, I agree. What an amazing story. Think how different her life could have been if she'd stayed in the Philippines. Yeah, who knows? But now, it's over to Tessa for Deaf News.